associated with Ripple, but it's not only associated with Ripple, is this simple chart. What if I move fiat to crypto and crypto to fiat? Is this called a bridge crypto or bridge currency? I can sort of say I can go from US dollars to Bitcoin or XRP, you, you, you fill in the middle, and then move over to the other fiat, uh, Mexican peso in my example. Um, and might that take some cost out of the system? We have Sean's issue earlier of volatility. If the crypto is fluctuating a lot, that, that causes some issues. If there's a lot of cost or friction, because now you're doing two currency exchanges, not one. I'm calling crypto a currency for this purpose. I know that crypto is not technically a currency, uh, but, but for this moment, let, let me just call it, you have two currency exchanges, and thus you have uh, two bid-ass spreads to pay, just the market makers, you need to pay the bid-ass spreads twice, and you have some volatility if the middle crypto is moving around. But this simple diagram is a big part of what Ripple is trying to create with X Rapid, right? X X Current is a messaging app of Ripple's, and it's competing with Swift. And, and, and it has some reasonable adoption. A lot of banks are starting to use it. But don't confuse that <laughs> with another product, which is an interesting product that kind of does this, that goes fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat. So what problem, what pain points would this be solving if it worked in, in the um, cross-border? Anybody want to remind the class what the, Tom? Plus well, reduces the number of intermediaries. You don't have to have your bank engage with a correspondence bank, which engages with a local bank, which then it, it, it sort of... All right, so it might, I'm going to say it might lower the intermediation uh, because you still have on the two fiat sides to a bank, a local bank and a bank. Because today you look at the biggest scammer is actually central banks. They basically print the money without any restriction and then just flood all the system with the money. And actually, if you look at the U.S. government, they have 33 trillion debt today. And going forward in every year, today's interest rate, they're gonna pay one trillion interest payment every year or more. Think about it, you know, what's money? What's the future money? If you can print all the money by all the government to solve all the problem, we have a problem same infrastructure in other countries. You have it sporadically put in other countries and, and we, we do see it from time to time. But in terms of like mass adoption, blockchain technology and just the wallets and, and the lending uh, applications and all of these different tools, they solve so many problems that aren't solved foundationally in these regions. Mm -hmm. And so yes, I think that we are gonna see mass adoption outside the US first, outside the Western countries first, and then we'll see that flow over. And eventually, again, the way that I've always talked about this, and I kind of see it happening now, is it's just another rail. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it like that, and we don't think about it as this like scary thing, mm -hmm. it's just another rail, then we'll see it you know, all over in the world. I love that. Uh, the real world assets traded on Stellar, I believe are more than every other platform combined right now because of the partnership that you have with Franklin Templeton. So Yay, yeah. Anthony, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, and the funny thing about the Franklin Templeton partnership is that it actually started kind of without our knowledge because Franklin went to the SEC before even talking to us and they actually started their approval process back in like 2019, early 2020. And we found out about it because we saw an SEC filing. And then after that, of course, we started working with Franklin Templeton. But I just checked right before we came on, and they're just under $300 million in terms of the volume that they have with Benji, which is their asset. Money Market Fund on Stellar. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the Patreons. If you're not part of the Patreons, make sure you're hitting that cash out. And we have Gary Gensler speaking of bridge currencies. Guys, we know he was at MIT. He knows all about crypto. And stable coin CBDCs are illegal in the U.S. Only thing they're doing is building on top of the current system. And we have central banks are the biggest scammers. But guys, we know blockchain and crypto give them even more power. Blockchain gives the NWO the all CNI. And CBDCs, they'll be able to tell you what, where, and when and how to buy. And you have three to six months to spend it or poof, it's gone. And we have stellar CEO states that the emerging markets are going to start off the fourth industrial revolution. 
And how many times have crypto teacher told you this? Yes, plenty. And it's going to slowly move to the West. Because remember, especially in the United States, we are the last place of freedom. And we know that doesn't work in the fourth industrial revolution. And in five years, where will Bitcoin be? Guys, we know the fourth industrial revolution would have been underway. And then on top of it, we will be going through hyper deflation where the robots, algorithms, and drones are going to take over the economy and Singularity Net will be near. And we know Senator Loomis knows all about this digital transformation. She knows everything is going to be tokenized and put on blockchain within the next five years. And the United States is going to lose that world reserve currency and you're going to have the rise of the emerging markets led by China with that digital yuan backed by that digital SDR. And remember, the crypto teacher told you about it and wrote about it a long time ago. And in the next five years, you won't recognize the globe and especially the United States. Remember, guys, 2025 is Jubilee year. And that's the reason why universal basic income is being tested everywhere. And then we have Shemitah from 2008 to 2029. And we know that big crisis, which is going to open the gates to the metaverse, which is going to lead to transhumanism. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. There was the great um, phrase that uh, when Bitcoin tanks don't sell in panic, let me get out first. Um, I, I was wondering <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the estimate of the panel in five years' time, what is going to be the price of Bitcoin? Razor, could I... Well, I mean, it's going to be much, much higher than now because um, the next generation is going to accept it as a means of payment and a store of value. Um, the challenge is whether we're able to create um, safety around those transactions in that are we able to limit people that are nefarious from using it? Uh, and I think Ripple and others will solve for that. KYC, AML, OFAC. No one wants to pay Hamas money to go out and, you know, uh, do their dirty deeds and others in the region and, and, and beyond. So that's the big gateway for institutional adoption. Once that's solved, I think it's going to add a couple of zeros to the end of that and um, make some good money. That sounds good. <clears throat> uh, if we understand where this Bitcoin is stored, what uh, really, how Bitcoin goes up and down, I agree with you, it will go up. But we have to be cautious of the fact, do not buy any asset unless you know where it is. We have seen FTX bankrupting so lots of people who bought bitcoin and assets have lost it so you make sure my first advice you want to invest in a, in a crypto asset make sure it is in a custodian or you keep it yourself you don't lose it so there's lots of things around it we have to be careful it's uh, partially yes it's, we could invest but we be we have to be careful that's my my thought thank you my advice would be don't worry about where digital assets are going invest in picks and shovels so levi's which produce jeans people who were producing picks and shovels you can't go wrong with that because the industry will become 50 100 times bigger and the infrastructure will always win irrespective of which digital asset wins <laughs> thank you well i think if you think about five years in five years i mean it's a long time for crypto mm -hmm. we're not talking about five years you know i mean usually crypto think about the you know, next few months or next year. Five years is a big uh, change from this. Uh, there's another cycle coming, <clears throat> especially happening. So if you're five years, you're going to not the next happening, the next happening. And usually when you're happening, Bitcoin happening, things can go exponentially. So usually if you see the peak to bottom in the last cycle, if you go back to 15, 20, you know, in 15, and then you look at the, the, the last year, and, and you can see the peak, usually the high, high, and the peak will double in every four to five years. So last peak was 69,000, right? The next peak is going to double that. So in the five years, it will easily pass that peak. Now, in that trend, there's a lot of up and downs, clearly. There's a lot of volatility. But the beauty is the exponential growth of the blockchain technology is going to support that. Cash will uh, continue to be short money, and that Bitcoin will be more prevalent as long money. Uh, so people who have a time preference that 
allows them to wait and save and be patient uh, will benefit by uh, using Bitcoin and people that are engaged in activities that require instant gratification uh, will be more involved in, in fiat currency. Now, how that will play in the bigger financial markets, uh, U.S. treasuries, um, stock, uh, stocks, uh, and, and uh, non-government bond markets, uh, fixed income markets, I don't know. I don't know. I also wonder how it's going to play um, within uh, the reserve uh, funds of the world. You know, the U.S. dollar is the, the reserve currency. Uh, but, you know, with the rise of China and the yuan and other currencies that want to compete for a role uh, within uh, the reserve currencies of the world, uh, with um, the potential for oil to uh, be sold and bought denominated not in U.S. dollars but in other currencies, really may change what constitutes uh, the world reserve currency. We may go to a basket of currencies for, as the world reserve currency. And if that happens, I am absolutely certain that Bitcoin will be among them and perhaps dominant among them. So um, these are times of great disruption uh, as we move from the industrial age to the um, information age. And these kind of disruptions are going to happen, I think, more quickly than people my age like to realize, because we're just starting to grasp what this is all about. And, you know, sometimes when you can't grasp it, you just think, well, hopefully I won't be around when this becomes ubiquitous part of our everyday life. Um, I think that even people my age are are going to live to see the day when this is a ubiquitous part of everyday life. to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity. And as an American, you know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. 
I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. The Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system has kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, New to Crypto's Coinbase, BitChute, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The Stock Channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Um, COVID-33, Part 3, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.